Hello everyone, welcome to Self Repair. Thanks for joining us. Richard and I are pleased that you're here. We'll be doing a He Said, She Said style reading and these are not sign dependent and they're also not time dependent. So it's a very intuitive reading and you're guided to it at the time when you're meant to view it. If you enjoy this reading, then please be sure to check out our Soul for Repair playlist here on the channel for more of these style readings. Now let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to Soul for Repair. My name is Michelle. My name is Richard. Let's get started. We'll have a quick look at your oracle cards. We have the monster within. This speaks of internal struggles, personal challenges and wanting to improve. There is a feeling around loss with this reading as well. So there may be a, a recent loss that you're dealing with or perhaps a, a loss from many years ago. But how we deal with loss. There's a feeling around this reading of mistakes and how we find the good in our own mistakes. There's a feeling around this reading of knowing our own faults and flaws. This can provide us with tools to transform those so-called flaws or faults as we may call them into our strengths. So where there has been an energy of not being unable to find the good in your own so-called mistakes or so-called flaws, and you may have defined yourself only in negative terms, there's a, an energy around this reading of creating new ways of dealing with frustrations and difficulties. So you can find your so-called negative traits to be reshaped and who you are will be redefined as a result. So changing yourself is a great purpose and this is yours at this time. Now Richard has pulled a card from the Energy Oracle and it is the card of Envy. Yes, the card is Envy, it's in the upright. And it says here, this card in the upright is telling you to let go of jealousy and acknowledge the blessings you already have in your life. So it could be for this person over here or it could be for you depending on how this reading is going to resonate. Either side can of course resonate. Whatever side resonates the most, that's the message. And if you're cross-watching, this may be someone that you're dealing with. Let's take a look at the bottom of the deck. We've got the Ten of Swords. So indeed, that sense of, of loss, maybe even a feeling of betrayal around this. And here I've got the Queen of Swords in the upright on the bottom of this deck. So let's take a look. We'll cut these cards and we'll focus in. We'll do a horseshoe reading. So we'll start with the past energy, the present energy the near future, advice, the environment, what's happening around you that's affecting you, hopes and fears, the outcome and the overall energy or what this reading is about. Okay, past, present, near future, advice, environment, advice, sorry, um, hopes and fears, <laughs> <laughs> outcome and overall energy. Okay, right in the center. We've got the Two of Cups in reverse, so, so it seems like we are talking about a relationship. It may or may not be about love. The Two of Cups doesn't necessarily mean a love partnership. It can be any kind of partnership breakup. But there's disharmony amongst two people, a conflict. I feel like there has been an inability to maintain harmony in some kind of relationship. And it really, it's really a call to action when it comes to how we deal with uh, with loss or the potential for loss. All right, so looking over here at the overall energy, we have the seven of wands in the reverse. This has an energy of, uh, of giving up, mm -hmm. of letting go of something, mm -hmm. not defending something anymore. In the past, we've got the hermit in reverse. So with this one, there may have been an inability to, uh, to go within to look within, to look at the, the hard parts of ourselves, the, the difficult places. Oftentimes when we go to that hermit kind of energy and we're being forced to look at ourselves, we tend to only look at the good bits. A lot of us, we find it a bit too confronting to look at the things we don't like about ourselves. And it can actually make us feel like we don't want to be alone because when we're alone that's when we're confronted with the, the hard things when we're confronted with the parts of ourselves we don't like when there's someone else around it tends to distract us so i feel like there's someone here who doesn't want to be alone because of, of they don't like who they are or they don't like 
seeing parts of themselves which only seem to come about when they when they are alone the other thing with the hermit in reverse is it can be about over analysis yeah looking too hard at oneself and mm-hmm. staying in that dark staying place. in that dark place yeah you're right so over here in the past we have the seven of swords so this talks about the plans, uh, plans for an out, uh, a strategic exit mm. or plans to, to leave something, but sneakily. Mm. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of darker energy there. I did pick up the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck for you, so there may be some potential for betrayal mm. behind the scenes. We've got Temperance in Reverse as the current energy. So along with the Two of Cups, there's no balance. There's discord in this relationship, conflict, drama. There's no peace. There is no peace in, in a, a current relationship. Okay, so looking over here at present energy, we have the Ten of Wands in the upright. Now, Ten of Wands is all about feeling burdened. Mm. So this person looks like they're leaving because what they're dealing with now is too much for them. Mm. In the near future, great. The strength card. I love to see that. Look at all this major arcana. It tells me that whatever's happening here is for the highest good of this particular person on my side of the table. So although it looks bad, it looks like there could be potential loss here or there has been loss, it tells me that there is something going on here that is going to create a situation which gives this individual the strength, courage, power. It empowers them in some way. So although it looks a little bleak, I actually feel it's, it's a moment when this person realizes that they need to go about this personal change, that they, that they need to uh, stop struggling with this hermit energy. And if they want to fight for this relationship, I feel like they, they seem to come to some kind of terms here where they find the strength to tackle what is preventing this relationship from finding harmony or they find strength in the ending of the relationship yeah absolutely it could be that okay looking over here we've got the tower so this is definitely a, a situation where this could end up a whole, this whole relationship can end up collapsing yeah but whenever we have that tower I get an energy around that of something that needs to happen because we can't keep staying in this place. Whenever there's a relationship that's full of discord, battles, anger, problems, something needs to give. And you know, this could just be that tower moment that's needed to destroy everything so it can be rebuilt on a stronger foundation. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean the end of the relationship. It could, but it could also mean the starting afresh Mm -hmm. of the current one yeah let's have a look and see what we've got as the advice again great energy the nine of wands because that's warrior energy along with the strength card it's about protection protecting what's of value to you very uh, strong energy around this of having gone through difficulties but rising to one more challenge there's a feeling here of something being under attack or threatened in some way maybe it's it's a thief a thief in the night, somebody kind of making off with, with somebody uh, in the background. That, that, that's a possibility. No, this might not even be this person. It may not be. This might yeah, be the person pers- who's plotting to get the partner. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there could be that energy as well. So the thing is, it's opening a door because of this discord mm. where there is an imbalance in the relationship where that other individual may be feeling somewhat weakened or vulnerable. Mm. Uh, again, vulnerability around mm. that Seven of Wands in reverse with the Seven of, of Swords. Vulnerable to potential poaching. Vulnerable to potential uh, thievery, I guess, is what, you, what I'm saying. But this card tells me that if there is something that you feel is worth protecting, then you have the stamina, you have the strength. And you, you could rise to the challenge of protecting that. You don't have to just lay over and, uh, and let it happen. Okay. So let's look over here at advice. We have the four of pentacles. It's in the upright and it's about protecting what's valuable. Mm. So this person here needs to decide, well, what's most valuable to them? Is it their, their freedom? 
or is it this person here? Do they want to go towards something new, somebody who's plotting to, to take them away from this person, or do they want to stay with this person over here? Mm. In the environment, we've got the Eight of Wands, so something happening very quickly, that tower event. Again, very unexpected. There is fast action, and it calls for fast action. But again, I get change, the potential for change. It could be a love rival. You know, we have the arrows of love mm -hmm. here, but it doesn't have to be. It really could just be someone who is headhunting, if this is about a business partnership somebody who uh, takes someone else's business partner away um, to start up another business or their employee or their employee mm. or uh, it really could be anything but but there's an energy around this of needing to stand up and protect if it's worth protecting now again that's that's for someone to decide I, I, it could go either way if it's something that's worth protecting then you're being called to protect it if it's not worth protecting, then I think you have to let it go. Okay. Looking over here at the environment. Okay, we have this page of wands here. I can't help but think that <coughs> this is a rival. Mm. It's related to the Seven of Swords here. So this is someone in this person's life who represents a new opportunity. Uh, another option, if you will. And this person, I think, is plotting behind the scenes trying to get this person away from this this person over here mm. and there's some messages here mm. some kind of communication That's coming right. in. but it happens very quickly we have the death card as the hopes and fears so yeah that's the decision time there's a possibility here of an ending certainly loss how you deal with that loss is up to you I feel for some of you you'll choose to defend it and try to fight for this person to protect it for others of you, you may decide, you know what, it's a natural ending, I'm going to let this go and move on to something else. But in the end, it's going to be your choice. Yeah, I look at the death card there and I can't help but think it's related to this tower. Mm -hmm. Because I had said earlier that the tower here could represent the ending of the relationship and this person moving on, or right. it could represent a renewal a refreshing of the relationship but still that's still a death in mm -hmm. its own way yeah either way it gets to some place better right and that's the hope here yeah is for improvements mm -hmm. wanting something to improve that's right okay so looking over here at hopes and fears we have the nine of pentacles in the upright so this is about this person here hoping that they're going to be okay at the end of this no matter what decision they end up making or what, who, whomever they end up going towards mm -hmm. whether they end up going back to this person here or end up going towards this new rival mm. or even for some it may just be a choice to be maybe they won't mm -hmm. choose either one of mm -hmm. these people and they just want to be independent could go that way too yeah now the outcome is the moon and i'm actually going to get a clarifier on that tower at the bottom of the deck again so very strong energy around this of change change coming in quickly but it's change for the better i can't help but think that th this ending or this event brings about change for both of these people very positively it it could be making the situation stronger between them but it could also mean that they move on to better things e for each other so let's see what is this moon card as the outcome what is the moon card as the outcome here the ace of wands in the reverse mm, yeah i get a fair deal of frustration around this there is when we talk about envy i do feel that we can tend to focus whenever somebody new comes in and let's say uh, their arrival and they steal your partner the focus may not be on the actual partner that they're losing because obviously there was discord imbalance disharmony here but it can be on how we view ourselves as rivals or comparing ourselves to a rival and I feel that, that, that the energy around this is making sure that if we're going after something if we want something back 
that we want it back for the right reasons and it's not just because that there's somebody else there in the mix but we want the actual person I mean it's a very natural the, the ego says well what's this person got that I haven't got exactly exactly okay so let's look at the outcome over here for this person Wow yeah well, it's the moon as well isn't it yeah so the the outcome here is is not determined mm. This person could possibly get this person back or this person could choose to stay or go with this yeah. new rival. It all depends on what is worth protecting and what's the value here. I'm going to get a clarifier on the moon as well because you know, the moon is, is not a card that really gives us very much information no. about outcomes. It, t still, it tells us that there's a lot that we don't know here and the potential is for not to take an opportunity for a new start where where one could be had yeah well the other thing about the moon is you know everything's everything's kind of clouded because of the events yes. so yeah both parties end up being confused because of the coming in of this rival here mm -hmm. but somebody left the door open that's really the right it's really the the mm -hmm. issue here and here we have the chariot now the moon with the chariot. Now the chariot indicates here that this person will make a decision. They will make a choice. The chariot here is about a choice, making a choice and then going towards that choice with full determination and drive mm -hmm. and not, uh, not wavering. Mm -hmm. So whatever decision they make is going to be a final one. Yeah. So that's the thing. When we talk about the monster within, that internal struggle, overcoming personal challenges, wanting to improve, how we deal with loss and how we've dealt with loss in the past. I feel like there's been a lot of introspection in the past about loss. And I think one piece of advice I think I can definitely give here if, if you're this person who's going to or who's going to suffer some kind of ending here, whether it be the ending of this relationship in its present form or the ending of this relationship overall. Mm. But if you want this person back, you're going to have to focus on them and not on the rival. Exactly. It can't be because you feel that you don't want to uh, have somebody take what's yours, like an ego N thing. No. It has to be that you want this person back or For, you, yes. and, and that you want, to, you want to fix things so that this mm. doesn't happen again. So, it, you know, it's the discord. It's mm. the imbalance. That's what opened the door here. Mm. And now it's now's the time to, to work on that if you do want this person back, but you've got to really want them back. For the right reasons, because mm. I get a very strong energy around this monster within here of somebody who suffers a loss and as a result of that uh, feels so bad about themselves that they're driven by that how they feel about themselves mm. rather than the love for the other individual and wanting that connection with that other individual which hasn't been working. So there's a feeling here of potentially losing out on a great opportunity that they should take and perhaps run with to either overcome that internal struggle within, look at what's important in their life, what's worth protecting, what is of real value to them and choose that or decide, you know what, I'm going to let this go, the relationship isn't what I'm valuing, and, and move towards something else. But th there's a danger here of not going either way and getting stuck, kind of getting mm. stuck with the loss here, and then, and then really getting to a point here where nothing changes, where, where nothing is evaluated. But in, it tells me very strongly that this is someone who can deal with this loss. They can. They have this. They, they have the bravery. They have this power behind them. They just have to see that, rather than looking at oneself through a lens of past loss. Not wanting to repeat that feeling. Not wanting to repeat loss. You know, we all suffer loss, but we, if we come from a place of compassion for ourselves, recognizing our strengths and not focusing on what our perceived flaws are, what our perceived uh, faults are, then we can overcome loss and we can deal with loss much better than if we're coming from a place of focusing on negative feelings about ourselves. That's how I'm feeling with this reading. 
quite a powerful reading but the thing is if there's a lot of envy towards a rival here and a feeling of really f bad feelings about yourself then it, it's not going to be a place of empowerment but I feel that this is someone who can have the choice an opportunity here a great opportunity to get that empowerment back and, and, and feel good about themselves but for the right reasons not just because they're envious of someone else's seeming uh, power or strength so I'm going to leave it there. We'll have a look at this in part two. Lots to clarify. So I do hope that you join us. We'll be pulling out a lot of clarifiers, looking at some Lenormand cards as well to see where this goes, and oracles for guidance. So please do join us. The link again is below in the descriptions box. If you'd prefer a personal reading, you can email me, gypsyinsights at gmail.com. So this is all how we choose to deal with the loss of a partnership. So I hope that you join us. Of course, if this one doesn't resonate and it won't resonate with all of you, you can check out our Soul for Repair playlist on the channel and there you'll find readings that are done in this style but they're not sign or time dependent. So your situation may fit more uh, accurately with one of those. We wish you the best at this, guys. We'll see you in part two or we will speak to you again very soon. Thank you. Goodbye and good luck.